A very good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. Max Olwasika is my name. This time around we want to speak about state of basketball in the country with one gentleman and a lady who form an integral part of the game in the country. Zedekai Otieno, not an unfamiliar face on this particular platform, he's been here before several times before. He got some nice deal overseas <laughs> and traveled to Germany and forgot us. <laughs> Even he was not picking our calls, but you know, home, east or west, home is the best. And Ivy Irungu from Holiday Inn also joining us this particular afternoon. Good to see you guys. Zedi, how are you doing, bro? Uh, I'm well, and thanks for having me. How was Germany, Bana? German, <laughs> since then, German since then, I'm <laughs> seeing you. You've, uh, you've German, been lost and found. Uh, not really. Uh, Germany was cold. Uh, it was nice. Um, it was a nice uh, educational program. And I'm happy I'm back, uh, implementing all that I'd learned in Germany, now back home. Oh, it was something related to basketball? Yes, it was a basketball scholarship. Uh, it was a higher diploma in sports development in relation to science. Wow, good stuff. And hopefully you get the opportunity to share the insights you got from Germany so that it gets implemented to the latter locally. Yes, and that is why we're here today, because that is part of uh, what we learned in terms of how do we develop the game of basketball. And how do we do that is by creating uh, local junior leagues. Good stuff. And Ivy Irungu from Holiday Inn as PR and Marketing. Good to see you, Ivy. How are you doing? Very well. Thank you for having me. You also love sports? Yes, especially basketball. You see, I have the height. Oh! In case you're doubting. <laughs> when did you develop your love for basketball? That is a story for another day. And a long one. <laughs> a very long one. So yes. tell us how you guys are involved in, uh, in the league. Uh, advocating and you know funding basketball activities in the country. Uh, we are very honored to have partnered with Zeddy and Vicapo Elite because it's something as Holiday Inn we've been working towards getting in touch with the community for different projects, not just in arts and the corporate meetings, but things like athletics. So this is a fast partnership and we're going to be the hospitality partner for the whole league for the next three, three months. Three months yeah. Yes. So if you actually come to watch the games while they're being hosted at Holiday Inn to Rivers Mall, you're going to have the opportunity to enjoy our hospitality because we're going to be feeding the teams. We're going to be making sure the coaches are refreshed. And that's something we are really looking forward to. Looking forward to that. There is something I'm always passionate about and you haven't mentioned whether <laughs> you guys will be offering it. But mm -hmm. maybe I will come to the location and <laughs> <laughs> try to establish whether it's on offer. So did you tell us about Junior League? for Vikapu basketball. How is the progress? I think it started a week ago? Yes, uh, the launch was a week ago, and then the games also started immediately. So basically, uh, it's called the Fruits uh, Nairobi Junior League because we had a title sponsor, uh, which was uh, Aquamist, which came in with their juice brand. Then we have Afrolet and we have uh, Holiday Inn, who are coming in as hospitality partner. It is very, very integral for us to have a junior basketball league for kids. Because once we start structuring it like this, it means it gives these kids a platform whereby they showcase their talent. And once they do that, it's so easy to identify them and uh, channel them into the junior national teams. Remember uh, the Africa under 16s on five games have just ended in Rwanda. We did not represent a team uh, and it's so sad. And it is because we don't have clear structures in development whereby these kids can be identified early so that they are trained as a national team and they go outside there and represent uh, the country. So having such partners on board uh, gives us the platform uh, to just hold a league for the next three months. We are going to play close to 162 games uh, for the three months. And you see, these are going to be very, very exciting games because we have teams cut across Nairobi from Korogosho, uh, Dandora, Kayole, Umoja, Kibira, Kilimani, Runda, so it is a league that is covering uh, the whole of Nairobi. Let me be realistic and ask you a very blunt question. You know, when I was at the college, I was so passionate about basketball. We were being coached by Griffin Ligari. Yes. He was the coach for the college basketball side. And, you know, I could... Kenya uh, one. Yeah, <laughs> Kenya one. And, uh, you know, we could, uh, I could personally attend the inter-university games, go to KU, USIU, J Quad, you know, because of the love and overwhelming passion I had for the <coughs> game. Not necessarily I was playing, but just to watch. 
But you see, what do we need to do to reclaim the lost gold glory? In between, there is something that happened to our game, and basketball is... Yes, and it, be, it is because of uh, the PR that is going around and also the partners we have. Because, you see, running a league means uh, a lot of financial uh, power that needs to go into it. So with good financing, it means we are able uh, to advertise the league, we are able to highlight the league, and uh, that is why now the fans are starting to come. And remember, we need to start training the skill at a very early age and exposing it at a very early age so that you're able to journey with this kid when he's 14, 16, so that you're able to aspire to sit down and watch him play. And now we are very, very happy that the league is going to run and the partners we have from Aquamis to Holiday Inn uh, to Rivers Mall to Afrolet, they're going to ensure that the league is sustained uh, for the next two years. And that is what is amazing because some of the partners have committed to that. So it means for the next two years, we're going to have a league. And our work as VCAP is to ensure even beyond the two years, we need to come up with an under-14 league that will be running concurrently with the under-16 and also uh, with the under-18 so that you have an under-14 league, under-16 league and under-18 league. Then once that chain is complete, now they can be absorbed into the national team, both juniors and seniors. In the past, before you come to live, in the past I've seen a sporting tournament getting initiated. Then later on, a few days later, I think the federation concerned raise eyebrows over legitimacy of the event. This one of yours, has it been sanctioned by Kenya Basketball Federation so that whatever you're doing is in tandem with laid down regulations of KBF? Yes, and if you also uh, saw the launch uh, of the league, uh, we had representative from uh, Kenya Basketball Federation. Mm -hmm. We wrote to them before st the start of the league. They wrote back to us, sanctioning the league. So it means they're aware of the league uh, existing and running. At the same time, uh, we talked also with the Kenya Basketball Referees Association to also sanction the referees. So we have followed uh, all due protocol that is needed to ensure that the league is legitimate and they are aware the league is running and it will run uh, for the next uh, three months and beyond because some of the contracts that we are getting into with some of these partners is to ensure the sustainability of the league because if you are not able to ensure the sustainability of the league then there's nothing you are doing because you need this league to be there beyond us. Ivy, yes. now talk to us about probably in the future if you're seeking spreading your wings a little bit further to you know, supporting senior side now that you're supporting uh, a, a junior tournament mm -hmm. in the name of the league they have started a week ago. Mm -hmm. Do you seek maybe going a bit overboard? A bit overboard in supporting other sports or? Yes, other, other sports and even the uh, senior basketball league. No, yes, definitely. So that's why we are very proud of Zeddy and the Vikapu Elite team, apart from just that this being the first partnership, like he mentioned, it's something we want to make sure is long term and is sustainable. So he's just helped us shout even bigger that we are very open, very open to partnering with other sports. We are looking forward and cheering them on to go higher because in the same way, there's very many other holiday inns across the globe. So, you know, if we feel Zeddy grew from the Kapu Elite is now playing games all over. That's also another network that we'd be happy to bring in the whole brand because there is more hotels under the brand to support this league. And the higher they go, the better, the bigger the doors are open. So we are inviting more people who would like our support. On a light note, you are trying to say that, you know, they feel privileged getting sponsored by <laughs> a reputable, <laughs> a reputable farm in holiday. Well. Um, anyway, I'm kidding. <laughs> so, uh, yourself having said that you love the sport and you developed a uh, passion for basketball. Yes. At some point, maybe in your tender age. Mm -hmm. and, uh, where do you see basketball in the next, like, let's say 10 years, locally? Mm, I'll be very honest, when I first uh, when we had the first conversation with Zeddy, immediately I went online and checked like the NBA, what they're doing, what kind of projects they have. So I would like to believe by partnering with people who share a vision and who understand basketball way better than I probably would. That's why we know we're going to get it to 
very bigger levels in the next 10 years or more. But as a fan and as someone who played back then, of course, I'm also looking forward to seeing the country just showcase basketball at a more competitive level and all across the globe. Wow, well, good stuff. And uh, uh, the country, as she looks forward to seeing the country showcase basketball at a big stage, uh, are we making this happen as stakeholders of the sport? Mm, we need to. Because uh, basketball is one of the fast growing sports, uh, not only in Kenya, but in the continent. So I'm proud that um, us having done or made such strides in development, because remember, our sustainability in terms of performance is boils down to the development of the league. And you guys were talking about um, Kenya rugby and what they're doing. They're not in the big stages right now, but what they do locally is what will determine how are they going to perform if they're going to go back uh, into the bigger circuit. So in basketball, uh, we are taking a step back and we're saying that we have to put in structures in development. And that is the biggest thing. And we are happy because you see Aquamist are doing it in rugby uh, under Menengai and Cabras and all that. And now they're starting to do it uh, in basketball. And we hope that such partnerships, uh, when uh, they are anchored uh, under a good vision and a good dream, then they need to leave uh, the test of time and we need to give our kids that platform so that they are able to only not only represent themselves but represent the country and represent the game as well initially when you were starting the cup basketball league i think you had prioritized your involvement in schools where we all agree that there is plenty of untapped potential at the school level but they never get the chance to showcase their prowess so that, you know, because of lack of structures. Yes. I don't know, how is it like in terms of ensuring continuity, in terms of the talents that get to be spotted at a tender age in school level as they rise above? Yeah, when you go to Kayole, where we are also working with the Fire East Basketball Association, we've been able to put up basketball courts in all the five public primary schools. And uh, we are having a sitting also uh, with the governor just to ensure that this can be replicated in all the public primary schools within Nairobi. Remember, when we were growing up, we used to have basketball courts in all the estates. Yeah, now this is something that needs to come back. And when you look at something like this league, and I've said that it en uh, encompasses all the communities within, uh, within Nairobi. So it's going to be very, very interesting uh, when we come to the end of it, how they fare on. And they're also trying to see if this can only just be a precursor. Then maybe have a league with more teams. Now the teams are only 18 because you have only 10 boys team, uh, 8 girls team. But you're looking at a situation whereby why not have 30 teams in the league? Why not have uh, 60 teams in the league? Because once you get to that level, it means every single primary school or majority of them will be in the league. They'll have something to look up to. So that is why the Fruits Nairobi Junior League is so crucial for us at this point and we need to ensure that it is sustained, it exists and players can have something to look up to because when you travel across Africa, we have a lot of junior leagues that are happening. Not only in Kenya we don't have because in other countries you have the junior NBA leagues and all that but in Kenya we don't have. So it's so important and I believe those are some of the things that the government also look at when they try to sponsor some of these competitions. And it's so sad when a junior national team cannot travel to go compete. Yeah? Yet we have kids who are talented and are equal to that opportunity. So we need to ensure that we put in structures and having a league like this one is so essential. Ivy, Rwanda, our neighbors and East African compatriots are doing prominently well in terms of basketball. Of course, in an initiative led by their president, Paul Kagame, we've seen construction of courts. When is all day in taking, in, taking us for benchmarking mission? <laughs> A benchmarking mission <laughs> yes, to, so that, to Rwanda. So that we learn what, what we're not doing locally mm -hmm. and what Rwanda has been doing. If in case it gets to be replicated, we'll do better as well. Well, we'd be very happy to speak to our partners across the continent. Like I mentioned, apart from the Holiday Inn Hotel brand, the mother brand has very many other many other sub brands and properties across the continent so but you've heard so, of, of of rwanda's heroic exploits in basketball yes what what can we do to learn from rwanda so that we can emulate on them as well i think uh, our leadership just needs to change uh, in terms of their vision in terms of their ideology 
because uh, as i said basketball is one of the fast growing sports in a in the continent and you see basketball we have what is called now the basketball africa league yeah bal bal which means they're focusing on the talent that is within africa so we also need to ensure that our standards in terms of our facilities get to that level because you see bl has just signed a five-year deal again with rwanda it means bl finals for the next five years is going to be played in rwanda if you look at our economy um it's bigger than rwanda's so it means this is an economy that can sustain uh kenyans are people who are lifeist they want to go out they want to spend they want to what was yes what was so i think um our sports cs needs to look into this so that we build facilities and infrastructure that will lure nba and all these other people to come to kenya because this is a good market yeah this is a good market to hold such activities and that is where we need to start convincing uh, <coughs> sponsors and everything that it's time to come into sports it's time to invest in sports and it will pay back how is the progress in terms of Kenya's partnership with global basketball great Masai Ujiri? I think he's been in Nairobi constructing several basketball courts. How is the progress so far? Uh, he has done well because uh, this year he opened a court in Kayole, he opened a court in Dagoreti, and there's one... I think I'm politics in Nairobi, you know, uh, in Kenyan culture of... <clears throat> so far so good because you see he has a team that he works with. So the, teams, uh, the team is locally. So they just do uh, the operation and everything uh, from that point of view. So I think there's no politics. I think the politics comes in when now we start involving other government stakeholders. But uh, I think so far, so good, uh, is doing well. I know it's not, it's not going to be the last time that he's doing that. Now the attention shifts to Kigali, Rwanda in August because they're doing one of their biggest activities uh, because they're going to bring in 14 different countries for what is called the Giants of Africa Festival. We're going to have Davido, we're going to have people performing there. So it's going to be one week of good basketball experience for our kids. And I'm happy Kenya is being represented by two teams, a girls team and a boys team. And then the team that is playing the finals today, uh, the Nairobi County Finals, will be representing Kenya in Kigali in August. Are you looking forward to that? Yes, of course we it are. It will be a nice experience, right? Yes, that's why we've kicked off with him and the team right now because we know it's, it's getting better and bigger and we are trusting the vision they have with the game because like I said, we are just, we've just partnered but they have the vision and we are happy to join hands and get there together. And in the past there has been a lack of goodwill from Kenyan corporates coming to the rescue of our dying sporting activities in the country because of that corporate confidence. Uh, for the few weeks you've had a collaboration with them, how, is, how are things looking like? Uh, things are looking promising. I'd like to believe it has been good so far as I did. Yeah, sure. And uh, I think maybe what I would mention is just for when you're reaching out to partner with any corporate, it's important to understand the vision and the mission that they have. That way, once you're able to align you as a person reaching out for sponsorship or support, you're both aligned. That way, you'll definitely have the corporate supporting more and more. But you see, now we're also setting an example for other corporates to join the community and support this. Wow. Ivy Rungu and Zedekai Otieno joining us this particular afternoon to share their insights regarding state of basketball in the country ahead of the Nairobi County League set for 3 p.m. 3 p.m. today. Beating which teams? Vikapo Elite versus Friends. So you're obviously <laughs> looking forward to win in your favor? Uh, of course, uh, because I think uh, we put up a very, very young team. It's the youngest team in the league. And uh, they've gone all the way uh, to the final. And I believe uh, they... You are very optimistic. Yes, that uh, we may take it home. Wow. Thank you for coming through and sharing the vision you have for the sport with us this particular afternoon. Ivy, it's been glad having you. I thought you would uh, struggle. Kumbe, uh, unajua sports? A little bit, yes. A little bit. Yeah. Pleasure having you this particular afternoon. Thank you, Zedi. Pleasure. Thank of course, the show still underway. Keep talking to us. Hashtag touchline Y254. Uh, quite an interesting conversation coming up in not too long with one gentleman who has been doing a lot. Rafael Obonyo is a public policy expert and he will be joining us in not too long to share uh, what he thinks about sports development in the country. Don't go away. Stay tuned. <laughs>